Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode something of the Spearhead Most Sundays podcast. I am your host, Lewis Spears, and I'm finally fucking home after about an entire month of being in a goddamn motorhome, right, surrounded by four boys, but only three beds in a fucking motorhome, trapped like it was a moving hotel room with none of the nice things about a hotel room. I'm finally fucking back home, and I've realized that, dude... That regional tour was awesome, but you know what? Probably never going to do that shit again. Holy shit. That's going to be one of the most, other than doing the shows, right? Don't get me wrong. The shows were incredible. Everyone who came out, it was so good to see regional Australia, places that we wouldn't be able to go to otherwise, right? That The shows were amazing. Everything else to do with the tour, kind of very shit. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't the people we were surrounded with. The people were great. We didn't fight. We all got a along for the entire month. It was just, you know, 30 days, only 12 shows. Most of the tour was me sitting in the back of the fucking motorhome while it drove, because I don't have my license, even though I'm 26 years old, going... Holy fuck, it's so hot in Queensland, I kind of understand the racism. I'm going to die, right? That's what it was like in the fucking backseat for nine hours, just sweating for nine hours, dude. It was literally a sauna with none of the health benefits and you couldn't sit up straight because you're in a fucking motorhome. It was the worst, right? Four boys, three beds. Do you know how many times I slept on the floor of a fucking motorhome just to bring stand up to you cunts? I'm never doing that shit again. The shows were amazing, but not that good. <laughs> so I'm, I'm happy to be home and I'm happy to say that my Melbourne Comedy Festival shows are on sale right now. I can't wait to see you guys at the show. Put on a great night of comedy full of things that you probably shouldn't laugh at but definitely will and then after the show you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna sleep in a fucking bed a bed that's incredible so uh thank you to everyone who came out to the tour really really fun but also really really awful at the same time you know what i mean um that's why i didn't do an episode last week i got home and i was like you know what i want to do i don't want to fucking do anything that's what i want to do what do i want to do nothing so that's exactly what i did guys and uh i've had that and now i'm back into it the grind is on the fucking videos are coming out and we're back into the fucking swing of things all right so uh what's been happening this week um well uh if you give a fuck about the the presidential election in the united states hey bernie sanders getting fucked over once again I think that there is a limit that you can uh, change the system in America without a violent revolution. You know what I mean? Like, this dude is trying to change, like, two things. He's like, hey, guys, can we have uh, doctors for everyone, please? And uh, what else does he like? Um, I was thinking that maybe we shouldn't uh, make sure that every student goes into crippling debt. And um, uh, I think if you work... 30 hours a week and yeah or if you work fucking five days a week a full-time job and you have three jobs maybe you should be able to also pay rent and that's all he wants to do is just hey i think we should be able to pay rent if they work for you know eight hours a day uh i don't think that we should saddle up uni kids with crippling debt and also i think that everyone should have access to health care that's all he wants to do really you know Oh, and also, you know, of course, the communist revolution. Did you hear that? All those people, all my listeners from Texas going, no, he's a fucking commie and he wants to destroy the world. He wants to take my guns. Bro, calm down, all right? Nobody's going to take your guns because let's be honest, if you're that serious about your guns and somebody wants to take them, you know what you're going to do. You're sweet. No one's taking your fucking guns. I don't think that's going to happen in America. It's one, right? It's impossible. Two, there's, you know there's going to be a bunch of nuts out there with militias going, you want my guns? Come and get them. And the government's going to be like, all right, we're, all right, we're going to come and get them. And they're like, yep, they're right here. Come and get them. And it's like, oh, all right, we're, we're sending the boys over to get your guns. Yeah, no worries. Send them all over. You can come and pick them up. And they're like, oh, you gonna, are you going to give them to us willingly? And they'll be like, no, I told you, come and get them. Oh, but you said we could come. Oh, yeah, you can come. You can come and get them. I'm not going to give them to you, but you can come and take them. Oh, this is like that fucking snake flag, isn't it? Yep, this is the snake flag. Come and get them. (laughs) You can't, dude. Here's the thing about Bernie Sanders. You cannot change the game while playing it. You can't. 
You can't change the game while you're playing it. It can't be done. This dude's come into somebody else's system and tried to change the rules of the game that they invented. And they're like, hey, Bernie, I would rather lose. That's literally what they've done. They're like, all right, so either we beat Trump with Bernie and then we have to deal with Bernie or we just ride it out for four more years of loss and then maybe we'll beat the next conservative candidate after Trump. And they're playing the long game because let's be honest, bro, Bernie Sanders... What has he got? Eight more years of campaigning in him and then he will die? Same with all of the other candidates, right? You can't be fucking 70, 80 years old and doing the campaign trail. That's like being on tour. That shit kills you. Dude, Ozzy Osbourne had to cancel his world tour because he's 71 and that's all. Hey, Ozzy, why did you cancel your world tour? Oh, because I'm 71. That's why. You know, like they, they, all of this fucking machine is just playing the long game of like, ah, we would rather, we would rather lose to Trump than let Bernie run our shit. So let's sit it out for four more years and maybe we'll beat the next guy. And if you want to keep the system that they have going, working, it must be working great for whoever the fuck is in charge. You know, obviously some kind of, uh, interstellar demon that's inherited Hillary Clinton's body for the minute, but is going to jump over to the next person, probably whoever killed Jeffrey Epstein, right? Those people are running it and they're like, I, I don't care who's president as long as I get my money and my underage children. That's what it's all about, guys. Bernie Sanders probably wouldn't be okay with everyone and his staff jumping on a private jet to go to fuck Island where there's a bunch of children held against their will. So he doesn't get to run the shit. That's just how it works in America. Land of the free, home of the brave. <laughs> That's just how it works. And you know what? If I, you know, I understand it. It's like, you know, all these people, I'm sa- obviously, it's absolutely terrible. Me saying I understand it isn't me saying, oh, yeah, I would do that. I would never, but I understand it. It's like, oh, you want to come into my fucking team and change all of the rules? No, fuck you. I'd rather lose, you know? I don't know. That shit's crazy, bro. Politics is so fucking corrupt, isn't it? It's so crazy corrupt. And and that, that to me, is why I think that Bernie is... Uh, I like Trump, uh, but I think that Bernie definitely has, even if you disagree with his ideas, I think he's one of those rare politicians where he fucking walks the walk. You know what I mean? Like, he actually gives a fuck. He's had the same opinions since he was like 20-something, and that's a proven track record. No matter what you believe in, I have to respect it, you know? Like, Bernie Sanders is like, um, he's like a good version of Hitler. You know what I mean? Like, Hitler thought the same shit throughout his whole political career, and then someone killed him, and he didn't change his mind. Like, that's Bernie Sanders just with different ideas about shit, you know? (laughs) I mean, let's be honest, both of them hated, you know, really rich groups of people. (laughs) Oh, we're getting cancelled. I can't believe it. I can't believe that I fucking gotten this far in my life and I'm getting cancelled already. Guys, it was such a good time. I really enjoyed it up here Um, uh, and uh, I won't be apologising because it is all jokes here and uh, all I can say is um, please get my comedy special and uh, come to my shows because I won't be getting any more opportunities because unfortunately I have been cancelled because I've uh, annoyed a few people called Karen on Twitter and that's just not on. Bro, I I did a fucking hell gig last night. I finished my regional tour. I'm in such peak form. In terms of stand-up, I am the best that I ever have been. Not that I ever, not the best I ever will be, because I know I'm getting better. Every fucking day I get on stage, I'm getting better, right? But right now, I know that I am in peak fucking form. I watched my comedy special the other day, because we're looking at things that I like, things that I didn't like when we're with shooting the next one. And I watched it, and I was like, man, this comedy special is so fucking good, and I am so much better than I was when I shot that. And I cannot fucking wait to jump on stage and record the new one and do the comedy festival. But ladies and gentlemen, I did a fucking hell gig. 
There's nothing like a hell gig to come in every now and then and just really fucking humble you. I'm on a high. I just did like a regional tour of Australia. I'm like, bro, I fucking saw the country with dick jokes. I did regional towns. We fucking smashed it. Me and my best friend. We did a great, we did a great fucking tour. We put on great shows. I'm getting feedback. Everyone's like, bro, you're so funny. You're so good. And then the minute I get back to Melbourne and I go back into my normal routine of doing like booked spots that aren't my shows, I am immediately humbled. By just how terrible some of the fucking gigs in this city are, right? Because, look, I went to New York and I was like, I can't believe that that comedy could be this. Everywhere I went, there was a club that was full of people paying money to see comedians and excited about it. Incredible. I've never seen anything like it in my life. I ran around with Andrew Schultz. He did four 15-minute comedy club spots in one night. And I'm like, is this normal? And he goes, yeah, man. Of course this is normal. I perform at comedy clubs. Where do you perform? And I looked at him and I just thought to myself, oh, I perform in bins. (laughs) That's where I perform bins. So I did a fucking hell gig last night. I get booked for this room. Never done it before, right? Uh, My boy Ruben, who helps out on the Luke and Lewis show, he wants to film a gig. Right, And he organized this thing with whoever ran the room and they were like, oh, we want a good headliner so that we can film and then just show off some of the footage. And if any of that footage gets out, I am going to murder Ruben and I'll have to find a new editor because unfortunately it was a hell gig. It was one of those gigs that where, where it was just, no matter how good you are, if fucking Dave Chappelle rocked up, he, he would struggle. It was one of them, right? It had nothing to do with skill. It had nothing to do with ability, but fuck, it was hell. So I get there and initially it's awesome. It's in the city. It's at a bar. There's like maybe uh, 60 or 70 seats and it's pretty full, right? Which is great. There's no stage, whatever, okay? I can handle that. I don't really need a stage. My fucking legs put me on enough of a platform, right? So I don't need the stage. I can handle that. So I get up. So I, I don't get up. I get there and I'm watching it happen. And then it's all going well. People are laughing. Comedians are going up doing five minutes or so. All like standard open mic shit, right? And then an entire group of 150, literally 150 university students who are celebrating orientation week, O week, get to the bar on a pub crawl at the exact same time, about 10 minutes before I'm supposed to get on stage. And it is the loudest shit I've ever heard in my fucking life. Get on stage and I don't, sorry, I don't get on stage. They get into the fucking room and it is just absolutely chaos, right? So the bar is split into, it's not split. It's one room, right? Whereas one corner of the room is a stand-up comedy gig. And then two thirds of the fucking room is just O-Wig. 150 university cunts trying to order alcohol to get as pissed as possible and who are not there for comedy at all. They are just there to get drunk and then later when they wake up, in the morning get charged with a rape that's what they're there for right so immediately you can't hear the comedian at all through the microphones through the speakers you can't hear the comedian right and then when you're on stage you can't hear the audience laughing right the audience can't hear you you can't hear the audience it is fucking hell a comedian called Luca Muller got up and goes, this is like performing within a panic attack. Because <laughs> all you can hear is, <laughs> can I get a, <laughs> woohoo, yeah, I would like one, please. <laughs> Don't touch me, I'm calling the cops. Terrifying. Absolute fucking hell gig, right? So this is going on. And because they're filming this show, they're filming just my set, they want to, they decide to postpone my fucking headline. So they just start chucking comics on. You know what it was like? It was like um, fucking, what's that film, that war film where they all run up the beaches and they just get shot? It was like that, where they're just like, oh, fuck, this isn't working. What are we going to do? And they're like, oh, I need more time to think. In the meantime, let's just throw lives into the meat grinder and people are just running directly at machine gun nests and fucking dying. All these comedians get up that were not booked. They just start chucking people on. They're like, do 10 minutes, do 10 minutes. They're fucking screaming that the O week is chaos. 
Pe- do people at, people at O-Week, right, because they're university people, young people, that's my crowd. Cunts were coming up to me and going, oh, dude, what are you doing here? Do you go to this uni? I said, no, cunt, I'm trying to fucking perform in a minute. Can you fuck off? <laughs> Right? I'm, obviously, I wasn't an asshole, but that was, was what I was thinking, right? So now, fucking, I'm trying to get ready for my set. All of these uni cunts realize, oh, it's fucking Lewis Spears, bro. I love your Ping a Pete video. I'm like, oh, yeah, what have you watched in the last six years? Oh, nothing. Oh, can I get a photo? Yeah, whatever, but I'm not smiling, right? So getting photos with all these kids, and then eventually, Thankfully, right, maybe two-thirds of the uni crowd go upstairs, right? The the guy running the room is like, guys, O-Week is upstairs. It wasn't upstairs. He was just yelling at that at them to get them the fuck out of this room, right? It's upstairs, guys. It's upstairs. Upstairs fills up completely. So then, right, the few, very few people who did fucking notice me and were fans, they came over. And they actually sat down to watch, right? And we, which is, I feel really bad for because I was a bit of a fucking asshole to some of them where I was like, they came up to me and like, bro, oh, we're here for O Week, what, blah, blah, you're here, are you doing comedy? I was like, yeah. And they're like, oh, we'll, we'll watch it. And then they walked away. So I was a bit of a douchebag. I was like, these cunts aren't coming back. They just want the fucking photo. And then they all came back. So I kind of had to be really nice after the show because I felt like a bit of a douchebag. So guys, if I'm ever an asshole in public, right, it's probably because I've misinterpreted what you you're doing because maybe I have Asperger's or maybe just deep down inside I'm not a very good person but I do try and I love meeting you guys and I say that all the time and I genuinely mean it except for when I'm trying to perform at fucking uh, Normandy that's not what it is what's that fucking beach where all of those Australian cunts died where they're like oh let's let's make them storm the beach here and they're like no here and then that was just the wrong spot and everyone died I can't remember right all these fucking World War II veterans are going to be so angry. Like, look, cunt, take your dementia meds, all right, and get over it. Get over what? I can't remember. I have dementia. So, finally, it's my it's my turn to get up. They've put up like three comedians that were not booked, and they just and they you know what? They did their best. No one could destroy in that environment. They did the best they could do with the tools they had at hand, and they did. You know what? I don't even know how they did because I couldn't hear anybody laughing or any jokes being told. All I could hear was, yeah, can I get a fucking corona? Coronavirus? No, the beer. Right? That's all I could hear. So anyway, I get up and uh, it's still chaos. And it's like chaos fucking max 10 meters away from me 10 meters away from me there are 70 80 people enjoying o week and getting absolutely fucking blitzed instead of watching the comedy which is fine but it's just fucking chaos right so i get on stage and i'm booked to do 20 minutes and i fucking screamed my head off for 20 minutes trying to compete with the chaos and i and and me saying that i yell right like, I already yell my whole set anyway. I have a very loud delivery, and my stuff's very ranty and yelly, and I build up and down, and a lot of it in- involves me screaming terrible things, right? So, I, when I say I'm yelling, that's compared to how I normally perform. If you've seen me perform, I'm yelling. But when I'm yelling and then I'm yelling, I'm fucking screaming <laughs> to keep up with this shit and to make sure the audience that were there... I have never witnessed an audience work as hard as the people I performed to last night. They were fucking great. They were like, we're trying to have fun too. We know this is hard, but we're also trying our best, right? So I do that and I scream through my whole fucking set to the point where I start to attract some of the O-Week people because I imagine all they can hear is just, cunt, do you remember, do you guys see that fucking dwarf that got bullied? New bit, working on it, might get in trouble for it, it's a fucking banger, right? And, And I eventually start attracting, and then all of a sudden there's fucking 30 people like watching because they don't want to come and sit down because they think they're going to cross the cameras and they're just watching from O-Week. I've started to convert half of the O-Week that's still left. And I'm like, can you cunts fucking sit down? Come over here. You're being annoying. You're shitting me standing over there. So I just scream at everyone to get them, get them to fucking sit down. One lady left because she was offended. That gave me a good laugh. Everybody else was fucking brilliant. I have never worked that hard in my life. And thankfully, I pulled through it. I actually did very well. 
I had a bunch of people come over to me afterwards, ask when I'm doing the comedy festival. So hopefully one of them will remember my name and that'll be, you know, a ticket sold if they have any friends. Um, and, and, but it was hell and it was a fucking hell gig, but I got through it and it just made me go, fuck man. I'm so grateful that I have an audience that will show up to my shows because if that was all I did, I don't know how I would fucking get through it. I remember when that was all that I did. Those where all I did was like five nights a week, open mics where no cunt wanted to listen to your jokes. And then I'd be like, what am I doing with my life? This is hell. <laughs> but uh, it's good, man. It's, it's so, you know, gigs like that make you such a better comedian. They really do. Like if you perform in impossible standards and you can still do well, when you perform in front of an audience that have paid to see you, it's like so much easier. So I've, I've, I've got a gig tonight actually, Kings of Comedy, where people have paid to be there. It makes such a difference, people paying to see the show because they're, they know what they want to get and they try and get that for themselves. It's like people don't realize how much the audience also works. Like... The audience also has to try when they see stand-up. Like so many times I'll see some person like at one of my shows or at the Comics Lounge where they'll sit there and they'll be like, you have to make me laugh. And then they have a terrible time and they don't realize that that's their fault. It's like, no, I tell my jokes and you laugh at them. I'm not making you laugh. I can't make somebody laugh. Like I can't point at you and go, hey, Stop being such a shit cunt. It never works like that. I tell my jokes and you enjoy them. I tell my jokes to people who want to enjoy them and they go better. It's You know what it's like? It's like going to a massage and not relaxing. It's like going to a massage and just sitting there fucking flex going, no, you have to relax me. It's like, no, you relax and then I will relax you more. You have a good time and I'll have you make a better time. I'll have you, I'll make you have a better time. I feel like I'm fucking Joe Biden. Well, back in my day, I had blonde hair on my legs. Dude, that guy is not all there, huh? That's the guy they're going to put up against Trump. He is going to get fucking demolished. They're going to put Joe Biden, a dude who can't even fucking string together a sentence longer than seven words without sniffing a toddler's hair and then saying something kind of racist. That's who they're putting up against Donald Trump. The, the, the thing with Trump is like, it's, it's, I just, I, I can't not like him. I fucking, he's hilarious. The only thing that I respect in this world is funny people and he's fucking funny. No matter what you think about his politics, he's fucking hilarious. Dude, Mike Bloomberg tweeted at him like a Star Wars clip of Obi-Wan Kenobi going, if you strike me down, I'll return even more powerful. Like saying, see you soon. Like, yeah, fuck you, Donald Trump. And then Donald Trump tweeted back a fucking edited video from Spaceballs of like his he a guy with Trump's head putting his hand on Mike Bloomberg's head while Mike tried to hit Trump, but he was too short, so he couldn't hit him. That is objectively fucking hilarious the president of the most powerful country in the world is absolutely owning and bullying people online on twitter with genuinely funny gear i have to respect it dude i reckon if kim jong-un was funny on twitter i would kind of be against south korea you know what i mean like i like if i would i reckon i'd vote for anyone if they were funny you know like if they if they if they wanted to fucking exterminate every man over six five, but they did it in a funny way, I would definitely tick their box. I'd be like, well, you know, it is kind of annoying that there are really tall people and they do make funny tweets, so I guess I have to go. <laughs> I would just have to do that shit, man. It's just how it goes. So I'm happy to be Oh, I wanna say, um how long are we going here for? I can't fucking tell. What's this? Uh, all right, about 20 minutes. I want to say uh, a 
big fucking thank you to everyone who's been uh, picking up Spears vs. America, my TV pilot. I know I haven't talked about it on here. I, I put up like a like a bit of an explainer video on my main channel that talked through the scenes, but I think what I want to do now is just talk like my plans with Spears vs. America. So, basically, Spears vs. America, quick rundown. It's a TV pilot of what we hope we can turn into a full-blown series that's like six to ten episodes. So, uh, Spears vs. America, TV pilot, right? Uh, here's the plan with it. Six to eight episodes of, you know, whatever it turns out to be, 25 to fucking 40-minute episodes. The pilot episode is almost an hour, just shy of that. And it's just basically the proof of concept. It's like, this is what we would fucking do if we had a giant budget. So, uh, the plan is, basically, we're going... We've put it up online, loosebeers.com slash watch. And if you stream it, it's a pay to stream because it costs us a fuckload of money to create uh, flying three people down to LA, an entire film crew, renting cameras and doing all of these stunts and pulling all of that shit off and then renting a studio so I can do the studio scenes. So much money. Um, but uh, it's only been out for less than a week and I'm happy to report we have almost broken even on the entire production, which is crazy. Like, I was just on the phone to the boys we, we made it with, and we're all cheering. It's uh, really, really great. And so that means that uh, it should tick over to In the Green in the next few days. And from that point, all of that money will just get stacked up, put into a little pool, and uh, used to fund the next season uh, of whatever Spears vs. America will be. So the plan now, basically, is to start pitching it to networks, to streaming services, to anyone who will fucking listen to us and saying, this is the idea, this is the concept, this is how much people want it, um, help us make more. And then if we get no's, which, you know, I'm fucking used to, we did death threats after getting a million no's, um, we'll just make it ourselves using the money that uh, we raised through you guys supporting the pilot and uh, picking up that stream. So grab it at loosebeers.com slash watch. Uh, there's a bunch of exclusive merchandise like stickers, sign posters, t-shirts, all that great shit. And uh, every fucking penny goes to uh, supporting making an entire season of it. So man, it's like, yeah, it's, you know, it's the dream project. I've said it again and I'll keep saying that it really is um, the best the best outside of stand-up, the best thing I've ever made. So this is what I want to do more of. And it's a real, real return to like the classic um, days of where I started, where I came from and uh, uh, really returning to that and doing it even better, even more professionally. Like uh, we got a, you know, we without ruining anything, we got a fake story on mainstream American news broadcast across the entire country. And we did everything in that pilot in 10 days with a, a tiny budget. Like, all of our money was spent on flights and hiring the cameras and the equipment, and then there was no budget to do anything else. So everything you actually see me doing was done with zero dollars. <laughs> so imagine what we could do if we had, you know, just budget to hire producers and hire writers and hire people to organize stunts and hoaxes and all these fake things that I have huge ideas to do. Um, it's really, really great. Spears vs. America. It's out now streaming exclusively on my website. I am dropping a clip on Tuesday night um, and we're dropping a clip from it. So I, if, all I can ask is that you share that clip around. I really do think this clip could be the next Marxism, the next fucking vaccine uh, video for me. It's like one of the biggest stunts we did in the pilot. And uh, if you want to watch it, First, go loosebeers.com slash watch. Um, otherwise, uh, if you're on the fence, watch this clip and then pick it up, man, if you want more of that. And I really, really, really implore you to share that clip around. Put it in a group chat. Put it on Twitter. Chuck it on Facebook. Whatever you can do, even if it's just mess messaging it to one friend, share this one because this is the fucking one. Uh, you know, once a year, I have I have one or two of these. This is one of them. This is the one that I want everybody to see. So share that shit around because this is the one, all right? So thank you so much to everyone who's got it, everyone who's about to get it, and everyone who's getting it currently while I fucking talk about you getting it. Loosespears.com slash watch. Let's fucking do this shit. You don't need TV to make TV. That's what I'm realizing every single fucking day. You don't need a network to make a special. You don't need TV to make TV. You make it. You give it to the people, the people will fucking love it, the people will show up, and the people will support it, and then the networks will come, and you already have your fucking thing, and that's when you can go, well, if you want my thing, you better fucking, you know, pay up and do what I want. So, I, I really do think that that's the fucking move, man, is really uh, getting this thing picked up, 
and uh, doing bigger and better things with it. So thank you. And that's all I got to say about that. Right. So uh, any of you cunts dead yet from coronavirus? I was out last night. I did a gig, right? And on the way home, I was just on the train and I'm just thinking about all this coronavirus and all these health tips like, oh, don't fucking touch your face, cover your mouth when you cough and don't sneeze super openly and all that kind of shit. And, and I just realized that that shit's like uh, just impossible. Not that like covering your mouth and not sneezing in people's faces is easy. Not touching your face, I think, is impossible. I can't do it. I, I reckon I made made it two hours out of the house without touching my face and then I would just got itchy and I forgot you know there was a clip of this fucking uh like politician reading out a, like a safety message to the people and she was like you know if you're outside wash your hands the most important thing is to do not touch your face and as she's reading it she turns the page of the safety tips licks her finger turns the page it's impossible I honestly think is, has there been a time where you've been outside for more than four hours and you haven't touched your face once? Really? You haven't done that? Congratulations. You've got no hands. It can't be done. Don't touch my face for four hours? No. I can't do it. I'd rather die. Honestly, I'd rather get fucking coronavirus. There's no fucking toilet paper at the supermarket. Everyone's prepping. Doesn't make any sense. I love that, like... It's people aren't buying toilet paper because of coronavirus anymore. Like people were buying toilet paper because of coronavirus, but now people are buying toilet paper because people are buying toilet paper. Like that's why, you know, like if I see toilet paper, I'm picking up a big fucking 32 pack and I'm taking it home because I know that there's some psycho cunt picking up eight and one day when I actually need it, I'm going to be fucked. It's so funny, man. Some of, my, some of my family, not my like extended family friends, there's like a bunch of people just prepping for the apocalypse. And it's always old people as well. It's like, dude, you're old. You're going to die first. So I guess it's a good thing, you know, I'm going to inherit all of that prep. You know, like if, you're, if your grandfather is like paranoid and a little bit racist and doesn't like Asian people, right? And he's prepping, you can relax. Because he's going to die first. It takes the elderly, doesn't it? So you're good. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> Dude, I've got a confession to make as well. And I feel really bad about this. Um, but it's just something that I have to admit. And uh, I think it's time for all of us to admit this. <sighs> Logan Paul's good now. He's good. He's good at YouTube. He makes great videos. He copied David Dobrik's style of vlog. And in my opinion, doing it better. He's fucking... I watch every single time he uploads. Not only do I watch it, ladies and gentlemen, I am excited to watch that shit. And I watch the whole five-minute video with a smile on my face. Dude, 90% of the time I'm watching YouTube with my fists clenched, teeth grinding against each other, just looking to punch someone. Because the amount of garbage that's on this fucking app is absolutely unthinkable, unfathomable. But Logan Paul shit right now, bro, I fucking love it. And it's time to be honest and admit it. Might be the comeback king. I've never seen somebody film a corpse get cancelled that hard in my life and come back even better, completely unaffected. Incredible. Kudos. Hats off to him. It's so good. He's just like, all right, well, if I'm not going to be on Google Preferred, I might as well just hang out with porn stars every fucking day and just film them talking about sucking cock. And that is the secret to views, guys. I need to find a porn star that can be like a side character. Dude, all of these fucking porn stars need to start charging these vloggers appearance fees. Like Riley Reed, Lana Rhodes, all those chicks, they need to start charging vloggers to hang out with them. I mean, I think Racker Racker are getting Riley Reed for free, but it may cost him a lot of his soul, is what it seems... To, <laughs> is what it, I, And I love those boys, but I see the fucking Instagram stories of them having their public breakups. I think it might cost a little bit of Racker's soul, and that's fine, right? Because the views are up, and that's all that matters. 
you know? So at least either you got to fuck one of these porn stars or you have to pay for it. I mean, I guess the, the, the Mike cunt in Logan Paul's videos is, is fucking Lana Rhodes. So I guess, you know, they're, they're, getting, they're getting paid in that way. You know, you got to sacrifice a little piece of your soul, date a porn star, get them in the vlogs, the views are up, and then you ditch them. And then you're all good. You're set for life, bro. <laughs> and that's just how it is, man. That's just how it fucking is. What else do I want to talk about here? All right. Oh, that's right. We were, so we were in this, when we were touring Australia, the regional towns, we, uh, we went to like um, Airlie Beach, which is like a backpackers town. And bro, there were so many backpackers around. And I, I've just, uh, I think I've always known this, but I think that other people need to know this. And uh, backpacking is fucking terrible. Don't ever do it. You, it is, I don't think it's possible to have a good time backpacking. Now, I'm not saying, right, traveling cheaply is a bad thing. That's great. Travel with no money. That's fucking brilliant. I did that shit. I'm talking about literally backpacking. Couldn't get any worse than that. Like walking around all day with a fucking backpack? No. Surprise, fucking surprise, right? We've had an issue at the warehouse. This place, sorry, we're in my bedroom now for all the audio listeners. Might be pretty obvious for the video cunts, but uh, for audio listeners, uh, we have now teleported. It is the next day. Uh, actually, it's been two days because the the guy in the in the warehouse next to me, right? So for some reason, I thought that the warehouse would be like a two-year solution. It's turned into a, a fucking brilliant eight months and it's been hell for six months now. I need to get the fuck out, right? Because my neighbor, and you know, I can't complain because did I, could I afford a soundproof studio to make films in? No, I gotta fit, I gotta afford a square fucking tin box. That's all I got, right? So the guy next to me is, loves to burp and fart. That seems to be his job. Is I think he sells something, but the main thing that I hear him do is just whenever he hears me filming something, he's like, oh, great, I did need to fart, so I might as well do it as loud as I can, and then after that I'm going to burp, and then I'm going to laugh at my own burps and farts, and absolutely fucking ruin the vibe of for Lewis Spears, because then he hears the burps and the farts, and he thinks it's a little bit funny, but mostly kind of annoying, and then I get a bit, then I get fucking distracted, because I don't want, I don't want this cunt to listen to me Screaming about how shit backpacking is. What if he's a backpacker? What if he kills backpackers, you know? Who knows? So, I need to get out of this fucking warehouse, man. Patreon, that's the way we're going to do it. I need to get into a fucking soundproof studio. I think that uh, this warehouse shit has just run its fucking course. And the, to the point where now... Do you, do you know what I do most days at this fucking warehouse, right? Most days, this is what I do. I come in, I've got a video written. I've started writing in the mornings. I write in the morning. I've got a video ready to fucking go, right? Keelan's there. He's editing. So I don't really have too much editing to do other than like some bigger projects, right? So all I want to do is get there, fucking do the podcast, fucking film a few videos and get the fuck out. That's all I want to do. But majority of the time, what I do is I sit and I wait for quiet. I wait for quiet that never fucking comes. Ladies and gentlemen, right? That place is supposed to be like a 9 to, nine to 5. It's like an 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. situation. That's what it was when I started. 8 a.m., 4 p.m. Everybody fucked off at 4 p.m. Bloody Lewis Spears started screaming cunt at 4.01. Perfect for me, right? Now, dude, I, what I was recording in the studio, and I'm sorry that I don't have the microphone because obviously I'm at home. I'm not at the studio. All that shit's at the studio, but that's never fucking quiet. I was recording that podcast at 8 p.m. on a Friday fucking night. And it is noisy as fuck. There's still people there. And I just can't do a good fucking podcast when I know that who, whoever in the world is fucking listening that isn't you guys. It puts me off and it makes me so fucking mad. And I'm trying to be funny, but let's be honest, I'm annoyed. All I want to do is make fucking videos. So I need to get out of there. I think um, the Patreon picks up and uh, Comedy Festival goes well. Man, I need to get the fuck out. Even if it's... Uh, 
way more expensive, which it will be because, you know, you have to pay for things like um, running water. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just uh, the, this warehouse shit is great and it got, pe- got me to the next level, but it's fucking run its course. It was so productive and so helpful and now it is actively hindering my business and I need to get the fuck out of there because there's nothing worse than screaming cunt and saying all of these heinous things that I say on this podcast... Then having like seven to eight strangers who you don't know and have never met just listening to it while they try and do their job. They're pissing me off. I'm pissing them off. It's not good. Need to get the fuck out. All right? So uh, I, can't, I can't remember what the fuck I was talking about. Backpacking, I think, was, was what I looked at. Backpacking, bad. Don't do it, right? I'm sure the traveling aspect is good, but carrying around a fucking backpack all day, every day, I would rather get robbed, honestly. Like, just get robbed. What do you actually have in there, backpackers? Just fucking put your clothes in there and let... You know what I would do? I would put my clothes, my underwear, and that's it. I wouldn't take a computer. And my phone's in my pocket, so all good. And then everything else, honestly, let strangers go through it. Now, if you're a girl, right, maybe that's a bad idea. You don't want some weird dude from France sniffing your undies, yeah? Yeah. You don't want you don't want some like Russian dude who's never spoken to a woman in his life picking the one that has the discharge on it and putting it in his in his pocket. You don't want that. That's disgusting and that's not good. I understand that. But also, let's be honest, if you're a woman, you probably shouldn't be backpacking anyway because you're going to get in someone's car and get Ted Bundy. So, backpacking it's not for chicks, yeah? Maybe in white countries. Only in white countries. Everything else, you know, fucking stay safe. Um Dude, I don't know how I, I don't know how women leave the house. Honestly, we you, like if I was a woman, I'd be like, cool, I'm staying home. Oh, I'm a woman, I'm at home, and that's that's my life. And that's not that's not on any sexism shit. That's just self preservation. Because the only thing that I have, right, the only reason I don't do that is because I scare other people with my size, and that is it, right? That's the only thing that I have. Is people look at me and go, fuck, he's massive. He probably knows how to fight now. I, no, I don't. <laughs> I'm, but I look like maybe I do. You know what I mean? Like I look like I've definitely knocked some people out. That's the vibe that other people get from me. And uh, and that's all that I have is that I, in person I'm kind of intimidating purely because of my height, not because of any mass situation. I'm just a large human, so people assume that I'm also violent, high testosterone, lots of fucking domestic violence. That's what people see when they look at me. Um, so I'm going to do a miscellaneous bit at the end here. Let's have a look at my fucking podcast uh, email. If you would like to send an email to the podcast, if you have a funny story, if you need some life advice, podcast at loosebeers.com. I'll do my best to get to them. Uh, and hopefully when I do answer them, I won't be at fucking home. I'll be in a nice little studio that has taps. That's all I want. Not even a toilet. Taps will be nice. Running my shit out of fucking... Uh, I'm, I'm literally using a fucking water cooler with a water filter in it that we fill up with tap water from home and we take those giant plastic jugs that you see on World Vision that fucking Toko who's an orphan has to carry you know that's my life like I see those World Vision ads and I'm like oh boo hoo at least you got someone filming you do it I gotta suffer no one cares about me so fuck World Vision what I'm saying is support your boy on Patreon (laughs) because that's a more worthy cause um Okay, well, this, uh, shall we, okay, uh, there was a funny one and there's a heavy one. I think I'm going to do the heavy one. I haven't read this one, but I have read the subject line. That's good enough for me. I know everything about this now, right? Okay, I think my best friend's brother is a pedophile. Oh, fucking rough. Because I feel like, you know, like there, there's got to be, there's got to be a lot of sneaky pedos, but there's got to be like, I surely most are like, fuck, that guy seems like he would love to have sex with a child. You know, like, they, they surely they give off kid fucking vibes. Like, I think that that you can, like, dude, if you can look at a, at a, at a here's the thing. If you can look at another man, and by the way that he's sitting, you can tell if he likes cock, you know? Like, some, a lot of gay men, they just sit gay. And if you can look at a gay man and be like, fuck, that dude sits gay as fuck. Surely you can look at a, a, a 50-year-old guy at a playground and be like, that guy sits chick kid fucking as fuck. You know? There's got to be, like, what's the gay sit? I have a gay sit. I'm not going to be, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I have a fucking gay sit. I sit down and I have a straight back and I cross my arms like this. And uh, you can't see right now, but my legs are crossed. 
Not like regular cross, double cross. Like fucking, you, you, you put the one leg over on top and then you cross it and then you put that foot, uh, wrap it around the other leg. Like I'm a fucking uh, vine. That's what I look like. I look like a fucking wall crawling vine. That's gay ass. I have a gay sit and I'm not a gay man, but so every now and then the sit detector is going to be off. But if, if I was to look at another man and see that he's sitting like me, I'd be like, oh, that dude for sure loves cock. So there's got to be a pedophile sit. What would that be? The pedo sit. That'd be like, uh, there's got to be a fucking... You know, what you, need, you know what you need to look at? You need to watch um, To Catch a Predator. And when he goes, take a seat. Take a seat right over there. You need to watch that and pay attention to how those pedos sit. If they all sit similar, watch out for any guy that sits like that. You know? I think the, the biggest warning sign would be someone sitting outside a playground. That's a pretty pedo sit. You know, unless you're a mother or a father, of course. But if you're just some guy sitting and watching, bit of a pedo sit. Now, if he was sitting, watching, and he's crossed his legs like he's me, that's someone that you definitely got to watch out for. Because <laughs> not only will he fuck your kid, he might fuck your, the kid's dad. <laughs> anyway. Um, um, hey, Luke, love the shows. Thank you. Um... I would skip to the point, however, I think that quite a lot of detail is necessary. All right, Khan, I'll take your word for it. So, but for about a year, I've been posing as an underage female. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right, yeah, I'm with you. You definitely need the fucking context here. Jeez, this is some... Bro, I used to do that on Habbo Hotel. Pretend to be a fucking chick and have lesbian sex with another man who was pretending to be a chick. But I was underage too, so, in you know, looking back on it, I was probably having cyber sex with a fucking pedophile. That's what I used to do. Have a hotel. I would fucking make my avatar into a woman and I would find another woman and I would have lesbian sex. And I and I thought that I was so smart. I was like, dude, this other person has no idea that I'm actually a dude. That person was definitely a dude and I had no idea. <laughs> and they thought they were a fucking genius or they thought they'd find, found a child, which is terrifying, right? Anyway, so... Um, I received a message. I, I've been posing as an underage female. I'm male on Snapchat and Discord to, to try and find and expose predators. Man, you're a, you know what? You're a fucking saint. Anybody who who spends the time pretending to be an underage girl or boy to catch and shame pedophiles is a fucking saint, right? Anybody who's like 35 years old sitting there in a singlet and tracks trackies, you know having cyber sex with some 50-year-old dude while they're pretending to be a 15-year-old girl. I'm saying it right now. Hero. Now, when I was doing that at on Habbo Hotel, I was only 14, right? I wasn't trying to catch pedophiles. That was for my own enjoyment. I'm not a hero, right? I don't need your cape. I know what you're saying. Lewis, that's fucking amazing. You're such a good actor. You're a hero. I'm not a hero, okay? I was a fool. This man is a fucking hero. This dude's having cyber sex with other dudes pretending to be a girl because he's a fucking superhero. Um, I've been trying to expose predators. It has not gone very well so far, and this really rubbed it in. Oh, so you haven't caught anybody yet? Jeez, how fucking dirty would you be? You know, like you can't even you can't even pretend to be a fuckable kid. Like imagine, like I assume the person doing this is not getting laid themselves because no one getting some real pussy is pretending to have sex with pedophiles. Okay, I, I just don't see that happening. I mean, they're a good they're good people, but so are nuns. You know what I mean? Nuns aren't fucking, but they're good people. Um, so I imagine that this dude, he must, he, like his pickup game is so bad he can't even pick up a pedophile. <laughs> um, right. So, where are we? I received a message on my fake Snapchat account from an anonymous account and we got chatting. I try to tell potential predators that I am 15 straight away. I told him this and then I asked his age. He told me 20 years old. No alarms raised. Okay. However... He then asked to see a picture of me, which is no issue, as I use fairly unisex photos of myself. Wait. Does that mean that, that, that you are sending photos of yourself? <laughs> Come on, bro. No wonder you aren't catching anyone. All these fucking pedophiles are trying to catch a little girl. They see you with your fucking biceps and your chest hair and they go, I don't think that's a girl. And even if it was a boy, that boy has clearly hit puberty. I'm not interested, bro. You suck at fishing. 
Although it's not like you can have... It's like, it's not like if you're doing this shit, you can have pictures of a 15-year-old girl. No, it's all right, officer. They were just to catch other pedophiles. That's just bait. I'm all good. You can't do that. You know what you need? You need like a... Uh, you need, a, you need like a, a petite porn star. That's what you need. And then that's what you fish with. You don't fish with pictures of yourself, you fucking moron. You're out there sending pictures of yourself as a man to pedophiles trying to pretend that you're a 15-year-old girl. <laughs> what, the, what the fuck are you doing? Dude. All right. Um, where are we? Um... He, he asked me, so I use, I use fairly unisex photos of myself. He then sent me a couple of pictures of himself, and this is when things go bad. I noticed that it looks like my best friend's brother. I went and, and compared it to his Instagram and noticed that, yes, these two, or maybe one person, looks incredibly familiar. I went back through my chats with my friend and found that the ages match up. My friend and his family are from a different country, and when me and this Snapchat account told each other locations, I found that he had lived in this other country, but now lives in my country. Well, Lewis, what the fuck am I meant to do? If my friend's brother truly is a pedophile, I'm put in an incredibly awkward situation. Thanks for your help. Have a shit one. Um, whatever this guy's name is, I'm going to call him Tom. Okay, look. Tom. Um... Here's what I think, right? No loyalty to pedophile dogs. If you're a pedophile, you know he's not your brother's friend. He's a fucking pedophile. If, if you can prove without a shadow of a doubt that it is this guy, right? That he knows that your character is 15 and that he's actually wants to have sex with that person. If that ticks all three boxes, don't tell your brother, don't fucking tell the family, go to the police. And if then nothing happens, because... Okay. Because here's what you can't do. You can't accuse this guy unless you're 100% sure that it's him. So you need to, like... You need to, out of this guy that you're actually talking to, you need to borderline get a fucking home address out of this guy or a meetup situation, right? And you need to prove that the guy you suspect it is, is the person you're talking to. Because if you come out there and you fucking accuse this dude and you have the wrong person, that's some life ruining shit that people will never get over. And you can never do that to an innocent person. So you need to be 110% sure that you have the right person first. And that once you know that it's the right person, you need to know that that person knows everything and is knowingly doing that. Because if you haven't made it abundantly clear that you're a child and they're still interested and you accuse them and you ruin someone's life because they misinterpreted what you were telling them and thought it was an adult they were talking to, just as bad. So if you can confirm that it's the right person and they definitely, definitely know that they are hitting on a child and they know that and they know they are doing pedophile actions, then absolutely fuck that guy no matter who he knows. Show the cops. Show the family. Show fucking everyone. If you are 100% certain. Because this is a very, very fucking dangerous field that you're playing in. And a lot of people's lives get fucking ruined by this shit. Whether it's fake pedophilia allegations, fake sexual assault, fake domestic violence. All this kind of shit where people are like, Oh, 60% sure, good enough. Let's ruin this fucking cunt's life. You cannot do that to someone and that is evil because especially if you're wrong and you go and accuse them, that stink will never go away even if you're wrong. So you're playing in a very dangerous field here and you want to be fucking double sure, triple sure. I cannot recommend that you fucking ruin someone's life unless you absolutely know who it is and you absolutely know that they absolutely know what they're doing. All right? 
That's my advice. So, prove it, prove it, prove it. Go to the cops. If they do nothing, and it's been proven, proven without a shadow of a fucking doubt, tell the world. If it's fucking true. Don't ruin a poor man's life. Alright? I'm going to end it there, guys. Uh, sorry about the fucking issues. Uh, please, please do consider supporting me on Patreon. If you're a former Patreon supporter, come back. We're rallying the fucking team. I need your support. We have to get out of here. After the comedy festival, man, I am so fucking done with this shit. We need to get out of here so I can really start pumping out some content. I honestly think that a big reason why the podcast has been inconsistent is because, man, sometimes I sit down and I sit there for, for actually four or five hours just fucking uh, waiting for a quiet time to record and it is ruining my fucking life. Uh, and it, ru- it you know it makes the podcast lower quality as well. You could probably tell I stopped a few times throughout this web- this episode because uh, I kept hearing shit and it was putting me off and I want to do a good job for you guys. So patreon.com, please fucking, if there was ever a time, it's now. All right, thanks guys. I'll talk to you next Sunday. Um, no matter what, even if I have to do it in my fucking bedroom. All right. Have a shit one. See ya.